evening, everyone, and welcome to the Student Government 2020 Presidential and Vice Presidential Debate. My name is Avery Spicker, and I'm the Commissioner of Elections for Student Government for the 2019-2020 year. It is my pleasure to introduce you to tonight's moderators, Abigail Hendren and Joshua Bowery. Abigail is a political communications major who is the station manager for Tiger TV. Joshua is a broadcast journalism major and news director for Tiger TV. Join me in handing it off to them for the rest of the night. Thank you. Good evening, all. So on behalf of all of us at Student Government and Tiger TV, I'd like to thank you all for being here with us tonight. Before we begin, we have to go over a few logistics on what the night will look like. First, we'll have each president and vice president pair introduce themselves and give a quick synopsis on their platform and how they got here today. Each pair will have two minutes for this. Following everyone's introductions, we will move into questioning. The first round will be general questions about things on campus that each pair will have to answer. Each pair will be allotted one minute to answer. Following the first round, we will begin asking questions specific, specific to each campaign's initiatives. They will have two minutes to answer these questions. Throughout the night, any answer is subject to follow-up questions by the moderator, in which answers should be held to 30 seconds. At the conclusion of all questioning, each pair will be given a chance, a final chance, to make their case to vote. There will be no rebuttals and or arguments allowed. We will begin with introductions in the order that the candidates filed with the commissioner, and will continue in that order for the remainder of the night. All right, so the order will go reach. Gaskins, Robert, and then in Fisher. First question. Student government's judicial branch is currently reviewing the governing documents such as the student government constitution and bylaws. If you could make a major structural change to student government, what would it be and why? Are, are we going to start with the introductions first? Yeah, that would be it. Well, hi everyone. My name is Stone Cox. I'm a mecha mechanical engineering major here at LSU. Uh, I'm originally from Houston, Texas, but then my junior year of high school, I moved to Lake Charles, Louisiana. So I snuck in just in time to get tops, so I often claim that I'm kind of a Texas Tiger with tops, uh, best of both worlds. Uh, I served as SIGEP's risk manager and IMC delegate this past year, and I, my freshman year I served as a College of Engineering senator, and now I currently serve on the executive staff. Hey all, my name is Ina Berrios. I'm running for vice president. I'm an English and political science major from Pollock, Louisiana. It's real small, right outside of Alexandria. No one ever knows what it is, so I just say Alexandria most of the time. I'm involved in LSU Ambassadors, where I sit on executive council. I'm a member of Tri Delta, where I served last year as our PhD delegate. And I've also been a member of student government for the past three years. I've served in different capacities from college council to now serving an exec for the non-traditional students department. We're running on the REACH ticket, and I'm running for student body president because I believe that student government can be one of the most impactful student organizations on this campus for addressing the students' wants and needs and making life on campus for these students as best as it can possibly be. And I want to be able to give back to all the students what student government's given to me, and I'm passionate about serving the students here at LSU. Yeah, so I decided to run for vice president because I genuinely care about the students here and their futures at LSU. You know, I want them to feel like they have a home and a place here. I know when I first came to LSU, I didn't have that, and student government was one of the first doors that opened that up for me. So I want to be able to give that to students, too, as well. Um, and I just want to be able to serve in that capacity and use the leadership experience that I've gained in different ways and bring that to this level and, in that way and just be able to serve the students. So we're excited to be here, and we thank you all for coming tonight. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, awesome. Also, my name is Desh Gaskins. I'm a junior here at LSU. I'm a sport administration um, student. Uh, and I am from, well, originally I was from Virginia, um, Lancaster, Virginia, so all of my Virginia Tigers. Um, but also, um, I graduated from high school in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I went to um, the LaGrange Senior High School. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that. So all of them have great, uh, I guess, Qualifications. My name is Hayden. I'm from Westminster, Louisiana. I haven't served on student government previously, and I haven't served in any leadership positions in student organizations. Um, but I have worked in a lot of different departments around campus. I've worked for the uh, the stadium. I've worked for the Manship uh, Research Facility. I've worked for Res Life, and now I'm working for financial aid and admissions. 
Um, and I'm a junior here and I'm majoring in political science with minors in energy and history. Um, so like Hayden, I am also new to student government. I haven't served in a capacity within student government at all. Um, during my collegiate career, um, minus the two weeks that I spent with Freshman Leadership Council, uh, so that was super fun. Uh, but I think what made me choose to uh, run um, is because I've been involved on campus um, in different aspects. I've been able to serve students um, starting with orientation. I've been able to start serve students with uh, stripes. I've been able to serve students that live into their residence hall. Uh, um, so, just making sure that I want to really uh, give back to this campus um, the way that it's given back to me. Uh, not only for the students currently at LSU, um, but the past students, the present students, and the current students that are going off into the future. Um, I think Hayden and I, uh, once we talked about that, uh, we definitely decided that we should at least give it a shot um, and see what the, student, the current student body um, feels about us. Touche, sounds great. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Granville, and I'm running for student body president. I'm currently a junior studying political science with a concentration in American government and politics. And um, yeah, that's not about me. I'm from Alexandria, Louisiana, and I went to Alexandria Senior High. And now I'm going to introduce y'all to my degree. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out. My name is Sophia Pullman, and I'm running for student body vice president. Uh, I'm running for student body vice president. Um, we are running under the Envision campaign. Uh, the Envision campaign is set on the foundation of empowering, innovating, and uniting all the great leaders of LSU and the Baton Rouge community. Michael and I, along with our staff and our supporters, believe that all great leaders at LSU come from all different corners of this campus. And through this campaign, we have been able to reach those demographics that haven't been reached in years before. We are really excited to start off this week and to reach everyone who hasn't been reached before. Um, our campaign, we have an envision, and everyone here, I encourage you throughout this debate to think of the envision that you have for LSU, not just for the students that currently go here, but for the generations that are going to come. So we now ask that you all hold your applause until the very end. Now I'll read this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Student government's judicial branch is currently reviewing the governing documents such as the student government constitution and bylaws. If you could make a major structural change to student government, what would that be and why? You know, having having gone through this election process so far, I think I think a thing that would be really great is if we restricted uh, passive campaigning to just the spring semester. So that way that people that are working in student government are more focused on you know getting things done rather than uh, making sure that they're a part of the next winning ticket. Uh, you know, I think that the campaigning can wait until the spring, interest meetings can wait until the spring, we can accomplish those things in the spring because we do them in the spring. And I think focusing on student government and working with the students rather than focusing on who's gonna get elected next is the most important thing that we can we can fix, you know, doing with with what we're doing now. I definitely would like to reach out um, to every student to gain their um, view um, on student government currently as it stands. Um, I know for me personally, things that um, I have you know, seen from student government have been able to <coughs> impact students in a completely different way. Um, and so I think that is at its fundamental um, structural change that we're looking for. Um, that's focused definitely on students, uh, but in a way that's efficient and effective. Um, one thing I would say that I would change as student body president is campaigns using the LSU logo. I've noticed that other SEC schools are able to showcase the school that they go that they go to, and I think that if we're running for a student government at LSU, we should be able to use the not the logo, but at least the name of our school that we're running. If we're running for vice president and president, we're here to represent this top-notch university, and I think that's something we should be proud of, and we shouldn't have to have restrictions on it for the upcoming elections next year. So, as leaders of the executive branch of student government, how do you all plan to elect effectively lead the branch? And again, we'll start with Reach. 
Yeah, so one of the things that's really important to me in stone is communication. And so communication is a lot of different things. You know, it's communication inside student government and outside of it as well. So right now, there is effective communication, but you know, it can always be improved. So right now we use things like GroupMe and like emails and stuff, but if we really um, improve communication, and like I know for one of the organizations, we use a thing called Slack. And so if we're all connected and things like that and just work towards better communication and using new platforms and in that way, it would really connect executive staff um, and just increase their communication in a better way. I would definitely say um, through transparency and support. Um, being a student leader, um, you're always looking for that person who can um, pat you on the back when you're struggling with something. Um, and so I have dedicated uh, pretty much every aspect of my life here um, to support fellow student leaders um, across the board. Um, so being transparent about the things that are happening, not only in my personal life, um, so that they can get to know me, but the things that are happening um, at the presidential and vice presidential level so that they can make the most effective decisions um, in going forward. Uh, but also knowing that their president is there to stand behind them and there to um, really show um, that they have the capability to make an impact here on this campus the way that they truly want to. Um, with Sophia and I, we believe that communication and also transparency. Uh, we believe uh, we work together to be communicating well as well with our senior staff and let that translate to the executive staff to make sure we hold those accountable for the initiative they say they want to do so we can foresee that through the future and for the future generations that come here. And along with working with our executive staff, having communication with the administration and as VP, you work with the College Council and be able to discuss situations and have great communication with the deans of each college. Going back on that same question about the executive branch, what would you keep the same or do differently than what you see happening right now? So a big, so a big one for our campaign is reaching each student. And as a campaign, we're constantly in student organizations. We're constantly talking to them. We're asking them what they need. But I've seen that in student government, we, we, we do table sits, uh, things of that nature. And, and those can be effective. But I think reaching the students where they're at, going to them, kind of overhauling student outreach and how that works, and, and making sure that we're, we're with these students and we're, we're hearing these students, and so that we can, we can most effectively advocate for these students. All right, could you repeat the question for me? Yeah. My question or the second? Yeah. Okay. What would you keep the same or do differently than what you see happening now in the executive branch? Um, I think I would definitely um, like to get a very large understanding and a very large uh, platform to be able to reach students um, in a new way. Um, something that Hayden and I have talked about um, that we're super um, passionate about is having um, not only a staff, um, but a group of individuals who are representative of this campus. Um, so at the time, if the campus is 70% um, of a um, certain ethnicity, then we definitely want to make sure that they um, are supporting us in terms of that initial decision, um, and then reaching out to all of our different um, executive staff members and making sure that the decisions that they're making are not only in the benefit of themselves, but in the benefit of the student body representatively. So never ha I've never been involved in student government before, and if you would have asked me a year ago today if, we, if LSU had a student government, I wouldn't have known the answer. And with this campaign, we want to focus on encouraging students outside of government to get involved. And by building relationships with those deans of each college, we're going to be able to encourage more students on this campus to get involved with student government. Firsthand, I have experienced how important it is to get involved like, with an organization like this. And thinking on student government, the leaders in student government, we currently have a department that's outreach. I do not believe that it should only be one department, that we all want to be leaders on this campus and even everyone serving the students and reaching out to students because we all are outreach and we are the service and we are the servants of these students. So we need to make sure we're being transparent. We also need to make sure that they know exactly what's going on with their student government. And student government should be an institution that serves all students and all organizations, not just those in student government. Thank you. So what? 
what role would you all plan to take in shifting campus culture away from hazing? So I'm in uh, Sigma Phi Epsilon here on campus, and so we are a non-hazing fraternity. We we uh, have immediate membership for us, and so you know working with the the new member educators of each chapter, and really working with IFC and PHC to make sure that our students are being protected and they're being safe, but they're also you know being accepted into a community, and you know making sure that it happens on all levels, you know in all of Greek life and in PhD as well, but also in other student organizations, making sure that working with the governing bodies of those organizations, and then also working with administration, and also working with the new member educators as well. I would say definitely on a collaborative effort, um, starting with education, on exactly what hazing is. I think if you ask a lot of people, uh, what hazing is, they would say, oh, making someone stand on rocks or getting whipped for whatever. Uh, but knowing that the true definition of hazing at its front, like finest, um, is feeling like you have no other option to do something. Um, feeling like you are trapped in a situation that if you were to make a different um, decision, that you would not be accepted by the group. And so I think being able to know that that is truly what hazing is will then set the precedent through collaboration and through education that when they're making their decisions, um, they will realize that and think about that um, for future um, references and future endeavors and future um, plans within this new organization. Before joining Delta Gamma two years ago, I had the stereotypes that most people around the nation have about Greek life as a whole. Um, it is unfortunate that LSU still experiences hazing. We last, lost Max Groover two years ago. I think what we need to focus on is promoting and encouraging programs on campus for every fraternity and every sorority to attend and making it mandatory, but at the same time, making it known that Greek life is also a really important thing. The amount of money that these sororities and fraternities raise for philanthropies across the nation is incredible, and I think Greek life should stay prominent on campus, but also continuing to bring awareness to hazing. So just a quick follow-up question to, so for organizations that are simply unwilling to change, how would you all plan to combat that? You said that you, know, you would want to bring more awareness and things like that. Yeah, so as vice president, I think using your voice to make a stance about something that you believe in and what the student body also believes in. So encouraging those who don't have the same beliefs or have the same concerns you do to understand that hazing is a negative thing, but there are also positive things that come out of Greek life. So going out to the public, going out to organizations that necessarily wouldn't be involved in Greek life and promoting it to them. And Mike Hell's not involved in student government, um, which also is very important to have both perspectives. Sure. Not agreeing. Not agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I see? Sorry, it's not student. <laughs> How do you plan to combat the rise in discrimination reported among LGBTQ and minority students in the 2018-2019 campus climate survey? Yes, this is a really important question to us. You know, these communities are so important to our campus and to us as well. So um, one of the greatest things about our ticket is that we're running with almost 80 individuals that hit all these areas of campus, and they're so important to us. And one of the first things that me and Stone did when we decided to run was we wanted to reach out to these communities that like maybe haven't been reached out to before. So one of the first things that we did was hold interest meetings at the African American Cultural Center and the International Student Center. And we want to create that connection right from the start. You know, we wanted to start off on the right foot and say, you know, we're here for y'all and we want y'all to be heard. We want to be surrounded by people like y'all and make sure that you're included in this campus and um, just a part of our campaign because that's what we continue on into, um, into student government into the next year if we would win. I think for us, um because we are on a college campus um, which truly has the capability to educate um, unlike any other um, force in the country um, knowing that each and everyone each and every one of us um, takes those approved electives and i think hayden and i have talked about uh, working with senior colleges on mandating mandating requiring uh, women and gender studies across all majors as an approved elective 
uh, so that those conversations can happen. Um, I think for a lot of students, um, if they have not come in contact with a member of the LGBTQ plus community, um, it's because they don't have a face. Um, they don't have the resources and the opportunity where they feel scared to be able to voice their opinion. Uh, but knowing that you're around a professor, someone who is trained and someone who is specialized in that particular area, to be able to facilitate those conversations, which are truly important conversations to have, uh, have as we think about equality, as we think about, um, awesome. Joshua, may you repeat the question for me? For sure. How do you plan to combat the rise in discrimination reported among LGBTQ plus and minority students in the 2018-2019 campus climate survey? Um, just being transparent as possible, um, making sure the students know that LSU do not stand against a hate speech. Uh, we want to make, stu make sure students feel inclusive, all students, just not one demographic. And we believe that, yes, we do have pe members of LGBT who receive this, and also minority students, but as well as we don't want to, we don't want to make it known that majority students, when I say majority, I say white students feel in excluded, want to know that LSU is working to make sure all students is welcome on this campus. I agree with that. So in years past, LSU has had an inconsistent presence within Louisiana State's government. How would you all handle the conversations or situations regarding higher education and LSU with our government officials, as well as LSU's higher administration? So, uh, though, just to inform everyone in the room, just in case they're unaware, uh, the student body president that would be elected would, would be possibly eligible to sit on the Board of Supervisors. And the Board of Supervisors is what governs the LSU system. And a big decision right now that we need to make is, is how we're going to hire a new president. So F. King served as president and chancellor, um, but I, I would be advocating that we would split the role. Um, so therefore that we can have a president who's, who's, who lobbies for higher education funding for the entire LSU system and make sure that higher education is a priority in the state of Louisiana. I mean, we're really good on the football field and, and I'm super proud of that, but I want us to be as committed to excellence in the classroom as we are on, on the football field. Um, a little backstory about um, LSU and its land grant history. Um, land grant universities are universities dedicated towards common individuals in each state. Um, so LSU being our land grant in institution, at its most fundamental level, um, is serving every person in Louisiana, regardless of anything. Um, and so making sure that government officials, um, not only in Louisiana, but across the world, um, across the country, um, but that higher education is a priority. It is the opportunity and the gateway for individuals to move um, to different socioeconomic statuses. Um, and so knowing that those are the conversations that we would like to have, those are the conversations that we're looking to bring before them, um, and not being scared that LSU at its fundamental um, capacity um, is set up um, to be a place where all students across the country, or across the state, or across the, the parish um, can come to. So yes, the student body president, the newly elected student body president does sit on, or we have the opportunity to sit on the board of supervisors. And we also will be having a vote for the new um, university president. I believe that what we are advocate for is making sure that the president is going to advocate for higher education, but not only with um, colleges and making sure higher education is advocated within Louisiana, because we all know Louisiana is very behind the education. And so making sure that they will voice the concerns of students and making sure students are being well served. We need the students on this campus involved with the possible new hiring of the new president because they know students here are the ones who have to go to school here. So they need to have a say on who is elected as their hired in as the new president. It's really important that we are hearing what they want because this is our campus. We're the ones who go here daily. This question is for people not involved in student government. Part of being student government president, I'm not my hand. Part of being student government president or VP means you will have to lead executive and senior staff meetings. For those who are not in student government, how will you leverage your experience in other organizations to lead these meetings? Starting with Desh. 
As I talked to um, the current president, um, William Jewell, he explained to me um, some of the different duties that the president um, goes through, um, some of the different um, tasks that they're challenged with. Um, have I served in the capacity in which he is currently serving it? Absolutely not. Um, but have I served in a capacity that is something very similar? Absolutely. Um, so serving as the, um, the former RHA president, um, one of my big duties um, was to advocate for all students living on campus, um, working with administration um, within residential life to make sure that um, their voices are being heard. Um, so like that fun torchy tacos that's coming, um, those are the different conversations that we were able to have. Um, the meetings that we were having with each um, community across campus um, was representative of that. Um, I think the most important thing, and especially like with me and Desh, uh, he's doing a lot of talking tonight, but I think a really important thing for me is being supportive of him. Um, so yeah. Having not been involved in student government before, when I was started, when I started to run for this campaign, I was a little skeptical at first because, like myself and so many other kids, on, students on this campus, I wasn't involved in student government. However, my past leadership skills have set me, are going to set me up to be a great vice president. When I was 13, I created my own nonprofit, and I run that all by myself. I've raised $25,000 and distributed 1,600 jackets to kids in Louisiana and Wisconsin who can't afford them. Um, I've also hold, held positions in my sorority, Delta Gamma, where I promote our philanthropy. I know I have the skills and abilities that it takes to be a great vice, vice president. So for those of you that have served as members of student government, how do you plan to leverage your experience to best serve the LSU community? We'll start with Stan. So having been in student government before, uh, you get to, student government is on an ideal level, very simple. It's to advocate for all students and to make sure that their needs are being represented to the administration. Now, however, on when you get down into the weeds of it, it can be a little complex with PSIF funding, how funding works in Senate, and in all these things. And so that student government experience just gives you a head start, you know, from the very beginning. Like you've worked, like being a college of engineering center, like I, I got to see how Senate operates, how, how money is allocated. And, and you can use that to your advantage. You can hit the ground running from day one. Yeah, so being involved in student government does give you a good example and advantage of how things work before you would take office. You know, for example, if you haven't been involved before, that's okay because we want people, you know, student government is for everyone to get involved with. And that's okay if you haven't been before, but by having the experience that we have in the background, we do know how things operate and we know what's effective and what's not and you know what changes need to be made and what doesn't need to be made. And you know, you start the ground running from day one, like Stone said, and if you have never had experience, you don't know what's going on. It's probably a little bit more difficult than if you do. So by having that background, it's easier to effectively lead and you know, promote campus. Yes, I've been in student government for about three years, and it was, I, I've had the pleasure to see the progress that we've made. Um, I do believe that we need more progress, and I think that I've seen the problems that we had in student government, and I think bringing a new perspective what fix those problems, we typically see the same things, that we can't really see what, we, what we're doing wrong, but when we're bringing that new perspective, we'll be able to see. I think student government doesn't need to be just one demographic, all student government leaders. I think we should expand the leadership roles and have different people from different backgrounds of life and also different leadership roles on campus to come be in student government. This next question is for President Zone. If the president resigns, is removed, or is impeached, the VP becomes president. Presidential candidates, what makes your VP running mate a good potential president? Should they be called upon to build a So Hannah, so one, we just addressed it. Hannah's been involved in student government uh, all three years that she's been here. She's a phenomenal leader. She served in other organizations like LSU Ambassadors, uh, where she's the cohesion chair, correct? She's the cohesion chair, and then she was also a PhD a delegate for her sorority. So she's, she's led in multiple different capacities before. And you know, getting to work with Hannah now, I just see how passionate she is about serving other students on this campus. And and I have full confidence that you know, if I were to you know be impeached or just fail out, <laughs> like that she could she could take the mantle and, and not miss a beat. I work with Hayden in the Office of Admissions and Enrollment, uh, Office of Admissions and Financial Aid. Um, and Hayden is one of the most organized. 
um, individuals that I've ever met. Um, she handles the schedule of over 200 student employees uh, within that office. Um, Hayden gets everything done um, with a smile on her face. Um, and being able to um, accommodate so many students at one time, um, I definitely admire it. Um, and so knowing that she would potentially take the place um, of, or she would take the place of me, <laughs> potentially, um, she would definitely take the place of me, but knowing that she would be able to get things done um, in the fashion um, that is most efficient and most organized, um, and definitely in the behalf of um, all students on campus. Sophia, she's very passionate about the things that she do. She doesn't, she doesn't make sure, she makes sure that when she admit, I mean, commits to something, she's gonna put her 100%. I think she has the willingness to learn what the president and vice president does or with the student body. And I think that just having her leadership roles in the background, so when me and Sophia started this campaign, I wanted to make sure I reached to someone that is not involved in student government. And Sophia was so involved in different parts of campus that I necessarily wasn't involved in. And I think if I am ever impeached, Sophia would come up and she would be the great president of this university. Thank you all. Do you believe that LSU currently offers good support for sexual assault victims? And further, what role do you believe LSU should play in offering these resources? So I think LSU could do better in offering resources for sexual assault victims. I know last year we faced this question a lot. A lot of things are going on on campus that just didn't make, feel, make students feel safe. And I know I live in a Greek house, so I have experience you know, walking back to my house at night if I come back from Middleton or studying, and I've felt unsafe before, so I know what it's like to feel that. And so I think LSU could do a better job in addressing those concerns and victims of that nature. So I think you know we do things like the live walk and promoting that and saying, okay, students come out and tell us like, where do you feel unsafe? What's, what are you thinking, you know, like, what's going on? And then partnering with the Student Health Center more and just making their resources more accessible, easier to use, more um, you know, promoted, so students really know what is out there for them and what they can use to their advantage. So I think it could do, I think it could do better. Um, I don't think you can ever be too safe, um, especially in a um, situation um, like sexual assault or just safety in general. Um, do I believe that LSU does the best job it can possibly do? Absolutely not. Um, there are times where students um, don't know some of the resources that they have. Um, and I would like to work with every avenue on campus um, to make sure they're advocating for safety. Um, that you have the opportunity beyond um, either Campus Transit or the LSU Sh um, Shield app, um, that there should be more opportunities for that. Um, it's no secret um, where Baton Rouge is in terms of safety. Um, so like having to take that up to the even um, 20th degree um, is definitely super important and bringing awareness definitely to sexual assault um, is at the top of should be anybody's list. Um, LSU, I believe that they do have enough resources on this campus, but however, I don't think they're highlighted enough. I believe uh, we can work with the um, executive department. We're committed to have them educate students about sexual assault and also bring highlights to, highlight to the different resources we have placed on this campus. Uh, me as student vice president, I will make sure that the resources are allocated enough and students know about the awareness and how to prevent sexual assault. I think it's also in important to the victim of sexual assault is our biggest concern. However, I don't think LSU administration has enough rules and protocols set in place for someone who is sexually assaulting our women on campus. If they are a student here, there needs to be something set in stone as a punishment for those who do sexually assault our women on this campus. This next question is for Vice President Sullivan. As the student body vice president, you reside over all college councils. How familiar are you with college council and are there any changes you plan to make in order to improve the current system? Yeah, so I'm pretty familiar with college council. Last year I served on the UCFY college council for the University Center in freshman year. So I've served in it for a year, so I know what it looks like and what's good about it and what's bad about it. Um, I think there can be improvements. I think the essential role of college council is good and it's meant to be effective and to advocate for students in their like senior colleges. But I think things can be better. I know I didn't even know who the dean of HSS was, and I've been in HSS for two years. So I think when you're aware of your administration and who your dean is, and you have opportunities to meet with them and be communicating back and forth with them, then that becomes um, just so effective for students. You know, like you should be able to know that 
and to know you have that, that resource to you. And then also just better communication with them, like you should know who your college council is, so just promoting college council and what it does and having meetings maybe for the college council within their senior colleges so students can come and meet their college council and say, okay, this is what I want to see changed in my senior college or I want this to be added. You know, things like that to make it more effective. So I thought previously said I haven't been involved in student government, but hearing from the previous VP or the VP right now, she did say it was very um, complicated how it works. So I would like to see, honestly, I just want to hear from the past, the past administration to see exactly what the issues that she saw was and the issues that she could, she saw. I, I'm all about past people giving me advice on the present. So I would much rather hear exactly what her intake is of it because she's kind of, she sits there, she resides over all of it. So I would love to hear her intake of it and say exactly what she thinks it should be changed and to get that change that way students are able to, that way college council is able to function the way it should function. Right now, I view College Council as an entity that's very organized because of our current Vice President. So being able to use what Taylor has brought to our student government, but using my own tools and skills in reaching out to those who aren't involved to reach, continuing to grasp and get a hold of those who are involved. Um, I think that if we keep doing that and keep pushing, we'll be able to build those relationships with our deans of each college. And when you build those relationships with those deans, you'll be able to encourage the students more to get involved who haven't been involved before. So considering the requirements for freshmen to live on campus, how do you plan to make campus a more inclusive environment in terms of campus programs and opportunities? Yeah, one of our policies specifically is adding a freshman uh, section in the career fair just for them because, you know, we all come to college and we get involved and we, have, and we have our fun. But at the end of the day, college is fundamentally so that in four years we graduate and we get a job. And, you know, being a mechanical engineer myself, the career fair is a really big deal for the College of Engineering. But a lot of the opportunities are, are for seniors, juniors, you know, you have, you have some for sophomores. There's really not that much for, for freshmen. We want to be... We want to make sure that we can work with it, like with senior colleges to advocate for the professional development of freshmen on campus. I would definitely say a streamlined programming process set in place um, across campus. Uh, working with Campus Life and knowing that there are literally hundreds of programs that happen on campus at the same time that each are not um, being uh, marketed the best way that they could possibly be. Um, so being that, that catalyst um, for growth in a direction that allows all um, campus programming not only to be put on the same website, but to be combined. Um, I think when we think about programs such as uh, Welcome Week and some of the programs that they have, those are very large programs that are marketed um, because those, that's truly what their focus should be. Um, on having a great time and you know just experiencing college um, to begin with. Um, so being able to reach out to all student organizations um, as quick as possible to be able to put all of our resources together, put all of our marketing together towards the same program that is reaching out to all students. So one thing about this campaign, we believe that student government should be an umbrella of all, all, all organizations. And with that, we want to make sure that student organizations working together. So creating a president's cabinet, and making sure we are all working together for the betterment of students. And so with the freshmen, we want to basically use student government, our platform, to utilize and highlight the different resources that we have on campus and the different organizations we have on campus. So um, using, just using our platform to make sure that students know we have these different resources and also organizations that they can get involved in. Okay. We will now move into the initiative-specific questions. Candidates were given the opportunity to submit to submit a list of initiatives to the election board. The candidates will now be asked questions concerning, concerning these initiatives. So reach ticket. One of your all's initiatives includes a dine-in option that aims to reduce the distribution of single-use plastic in the student union. With so much concern over public health right now, what can you say about the hygienic issues involved with switching to reusable items such as trays and plates? And how would you plan to implement this? Yes, yeah, so that's a really good question. 
So we want to have this option for sustainability reasons. You know, right now there's a lot of waste that goes into when we get to go options in the union. So that's the whole purpose behind it. But it is also import important to have hygienic processes. And you know, right now in the dining halls, they have a good process going. You know, it's been going for forever. They don't. They use reusable plates and um, forks, utensils, and things like that. So using the same techniques that are used in the dining hall, but adding that into the union to have those options. Um, but also using the process they already use, you know, that seems to be effective. So just incorporating that into the union. And how do you all plan to implement that for a quick follow-up? Yeah, so we have to work with several different apartments, um, campus affairs and sustainability for one, and then student auxiliary services for another. And so just meeting with them and seeing how the logistics would work. Um, you know, you can't get it all accomplished at once, but you know, you get it started, you get the ball rolling on it. And even if it's just small changes, like having a reusable cup station to begin with, like, you know, bring your own water bottle, your own mug, like that. Um, or having, you know, like bulk condiment sections, things like that. So it starts small and then work your way up to what you're trying to accomplish. This next question is for gas and throw it. In your initiatives, you discussed the implementation of campus equality research surveys. How would these differ from the current ones offered and how do you plan to reach or gain the involvement of all areas of campus with these surveys? When thinking about research surveys and what we're looking to gain and the, the, and the capacity and what we're looking to gain them um, as student government, um, having our touch on them in terms of an academic background. Um, so we're working with different departments such as the sociology department, we're thinking about um, going across um, all aspects of campus, I think is truly something that is important to us and being able to know that the research that we're we are looking at um, its function by us, for us, um, in a way um, that has the educational background that we're looking for, um, tailored um, to with the future that we're looking to bring um, student government. So to follow up, how would you all plan to encourage students to take these surveys when honestly, we've all been there, we've, we've had it where we didn't really want to do it, so how would you all encourage that? Also, so I think a way that we could potentially um, implement those surveys, not necessarily as a survey um, that's sent out in an email, um, but maybe a survey that you actually are completing before you. Um, just someone coming up to you and say, hey, how do you feel about this? And if they feel comfortable doing that and expressing truly the concern um, that they have and being able to do so. And if they would like to follow up within like a, a survey that's an uh, anonymous, um, they have the opportunity to do. Vision. Many students plan to continue their education after their undergraduate studies and in the process prepare for tests such as the LSAT, GRE, and MCAT. In your initiatives, you mentioned providing classes to help students prepare for these entrance exams. How do you plan to sustainably fund such programs so that they prove to be long-lasting well into the future? So we currently in an environment where LSU is bringing in a lot of minority students and also bringing a lot of first-gen students. And those students who continue their education here and get to the senior level, they are not able to pay for those prep courses or have private tutoring with, uh, for the test courses. And we would work alongside with LSU and faculty and staff to see where is money that can be allocated towards these funding and see can we fund those who aren't able to pay for those courses or pay for able to do prep courses for the different types of tests they need to take to the advancement of their education. And when we are, if LSU were to pay for those prep courses, it'll only encourage our students to advance their degrees in a positive way. then I guess we'll move into closing. Are you all ready for your closing statements? You all reach and go, you're ready. Okay, so our campaign at its core strives to reach every student on this campus. We wanna have a connected, inclusive community, not only within student government, but all throughout LSU as well. Using our leadership experience, we strive to unite, lead, and empower each student through creating policies that are powerful, purposeful, and most importantly to us, possible. Hannah and I are running to make sure that every student on this campus not only knows that student government exists, but how it operates and how it can be effective for them. 
We want to empower each student to make positive change on this campus, not only for themselves, but for their communities as well. This is something that our ticket has strived to do from the very beginning. From, our, from the first meeting with me and Hannah, to our first meeting with our staff, and to all of our interest meetings, we've been striving to reach each student where they are so that we can provide them the necessary resources to improve LSU for the better. So we, when me and Dash first started out, we didn't know much about what was going on with, L, with student government at LSU. Um, so I think one of the most important things that we really strive for and really want for student government is transparency. So we would like to implement some kind of you know newsletter for the month of like what student government is trying to do with, for that certain time period. Because if you get student back, if you have students to back your initiatives, then it just makes that initiative more strong. So we just want transparency and honesty within student government, and that's really what we. That's what we set our entire campaign on. And then with our initiatives, we, we selected things that we, we thought we could get accomplished within the year that we have to be able to accomplish those things. We didn't want to set all these initiatives that just seemed like they're great things, but we wanted to have stuff that we could promise students that we followed through with. Um, so that's why we had only had, a, you know, this, the initiatives that we decided on, those are the ones we felt like we could get this started. And if this initiative can get somewhere, then we can only go further and make that initiative go further. Absolutely. So when we when we came together and we thought about some of the different aspects on campus that we were looking to um, improve, and as we threw out um, some great words, some great uh, initiative ideas that we had, um, we began to realize what a uh, Dutch and Hayden um, administration would look like. Uh, we definitely strive to have diversity, um, equality, um, sustainability, um, and health and wellness. And if you notice, those happen to spell Dutch um, in true nature um, because we really wanted to make sure that that is the, the, uh, the baseline of a Dutch presidency. By a show of hands, how many people in this room are on a campaign or in student government? All right, look around. How many people in this room are not on a campaign and not in student government? look around. This is what the Envision ticket is trying to fix with our student government, is connecting with those students who have never been involved before. And with the Envision ticket, we believe that diversity matters, not only by race, but with leadership and individuality. We have to make sure that the students going to represent the school and going to serve this school, we have to bring representation to student government. We have to make sure they look like us and make sure that we are being transparent and make sure that we are leading them and making sure that all students are being served, not only one demographic. So with our campaign staff, we have 70% of them that are not, and not in student government and a little more, they're just in student government because we do believe that transparency is possible and we do believe that we, we need to represent all student body and not just one demographic. Thank you all. Thank you. I will now hand it back over to Avery Spicker for some final words. But first, let's have one final round of applause for all six of our And let's have a thank you to Abigail and Joshua for having such a success tonight. all of the candidates, Tiger TV, Student Government, and the Election Board for helping to ensure tonight's success. Now that you have heard from the candidates, I would like to extend an invitation to all students to vote on TigerLink on March 9th from midnight to 11.59 p.m. Students can reach the voting link through an email that will be sent out Monday morning or through the homepage of TigerLink or the homepage of Moodle. Thank you so much for coming and have a great night.